We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packed app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Today we're putting the Instant Pot Gadget to the test to see if it deserves a spot in our kitchen. Now, in the spirit of both fair testing and chefy experimentation, I've already been playing with this bit of kit at my own home for several weeks and I've now picked five recipes for our normals to try. Why do I feel like it's not just the gadget that's being tested today? So the Instant Pot is a standalone plug-in appliance that has many, many functions going on. So you've got slow cook, you've got steam, you've got pressure cook, you've got functions specific for yogurt or rice. We're gonna test a whole bunch. And if you're one of the first 50 people to order it right now, we'll give it to you for a special discount price. <laughs> yeah, you've got the job, mate. This first <laughs> recipe, one pot orzo lamb, and I've chosen it because it's gonna test saute, high pressure, and slow cook. First step, switch on to saute mode. It's going to beep at you three times. Add some oil into the Instant Pot and then sear your lamb. Like any pan on the hob, you want to give it plenty of time to get hot before you add the lamb. Otherwise, you run the risk of stewing the lamb rather than searing it. Do the dad check to make sure the tongs work. Yep. This as a recipe is already a really easy recipe. I'm interested to see how much simpler this makes it. Have a look at that. Whip the lamb out then into a bowl and you're going to add your sliced red onion. If I'm searing off lamb in a frying pan, where is all that fat and oil going? All over the hob. Oh, yeah, all point. over the hob, all over my kitchen. This has got such deep sides, it's barely come out. Once the onions are softened, add in a sliced clove of garlic, paprika, oregano, a little bit of cinnamon, salt and pepper. Then a tin of tomatoes, about equal amount of water, and your lamb can go back in too. Whack the lid on, make sure the vent is sealed, then cancel it, pressure cooker set to high, 30 minutes, job done. The good thing is, while your lamb's been cooking under pressure, in a fraction of the time, you can do whatever you want. Recipe number two, while our lamb pressure cooks for half an hour, we're gonna test the steam function by making a steamed pudding, something sweet. I've never made anything like this before, Ben, so you to really hold my hand, I think, here. I'm gonna be honest, I hadn't until a week or so ago. I tried a Sussex Pond pudding, failure. Asked on Twitter for a better option. Guards pudding was suggested. Didn't know what it was, looked up. This is a version of that. Sussex Pond pudding. Yeah, it looks like this. Can't get any more British than that, can you? So, guards pudding is breadcrumbs in a bowl that you're gonna add sugar, flour, baking powder, lemon zest, and vanilla to. This is a very, very thrifty pudding. I've never heard of it before. Mix up your dry ingredients and then you're going to stir in melted butter, warmed jam, or we're going to use ginger preserve, and three beaten eggs. I've got you a pudding basin that has been greased and lined with greaseproof paper, so it's easy to get it out later on, and the whole mix goes in. I think this really shows the difference between normals cooking and chef's cooking, because if you say to me, steamer, I'm thinking of steaming vegetables or maybe salmon at a push. You go, no, we're doing puddings. <laughs> no, that's that, that's that's more about Ben's diet. Oh, than okay, else. maybe that's what that is. <laughs> So this little lining thing here, this is just to lift it out later. Tin foil over the top, so that in your steaming vessel you don't get any water inside of it. Evans, is that a bonnet de douche? <laughs> just Did you bring this that on from top. Home? Into the instant pot. Steam function. We are going for low pressure. So already set, it remembers the, what you did last time on the theory that you often end up cooking the same things multiple times. On, and we're off, we'll see you in two hours. But it says on, does No, it's, yeah, and we're on, but we're off. As it's well. like, does an alarm clock go oh, off or off? Quick release the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Should we have a look? Please. Add the also, give it a stir. What's, it, what's the meat look like? Uh, the meat is looking very, very tender. <laughs> Does it need more water in it to cook yours though? No, mate, there's tons of water in it. Is there? Yeah. And this is why Instant Pot recipes you kind of have to follow, because it's the right ratio of ingredients based on pressure cook, based on what's left, and okay. it should all work. Lid back on. Pressure cook for six minutes. 
six minutes. So thinking about how we would cook this dish without the Instant Pot, the big thing that we're saving is time because this would have bubbled away for a couple of hours just in a normal saucepan, whereas we've done that in 30 minutes. And theoretically, this will also work nicely if you haven't got access to a hob, gas hob, regular hob or whatever, because it's just a plug, it's a, it's, it's standalone thing. Victory. Spinach and olives go in, kind of stops the cooking, but also works the spinach. Ebbers, I think we're there. I have to say, it smells great. We've chosen a very lovely bowl, but it does look good as well. Shall we see how it eats? Cheers. This, this is a bit of me, this. That is very tender lamb. Tender lamb, well-cooked pasta, and then the spinach last minute. I think it's got everything you want in a kind of comforting dish. The process was incredibly easy, like really, really easy. Flavour-wise, I love it, but do you feel like you're compromising on flavour at all with time? Far from, and that lamb is still, because it's quite a nice fatty cut that does take a long time to cook, under pressure, you skip past that, but you've still got that unctuous lamb and it melts in the mouth. Well, first test, as a pressure cooker, it works. Oh my. I knew that was coming, it's fine. And what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's finished steaming. Off with the tin foil. Oh, okay. I'm with you. I've made a, I've made a steam pudding. I never thought I'd do that. Cheers. Cheers. I'm going to say a word I hate, but that is incredibly moist. It's got the goo of bread pudding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stodgy, sweet. The ginger and the lemon keeps it kind of clean. Excellent. As a steamer, there's no doubt that that works really well. Um, I steam a lot at home, already a lot of fish, a lot of veg. That's even simpler, but a bit over the top for a steamer alone. Ebers, what's next? Beans. So this is a recipe from our cookbook, How We Cook, and it's how to cook dried beans under pressure without soaking the beans overnight. Into the pot, throw your beans. What beans are these? Pinto. Pretty much any dried beans are good. Cold water, six times the amount as there are beans. Some flavours for aromats, that's onion, garlic, lemon, thyme. Generous glug of olive oil. A pinch of salt. Get the lid on and you're going to cook it at high pressure for 45 minutes. So this beans recipe is from our cookbook that was not originally created in an instant pot. So what do I have to know to change the recipe to make it suitable to cook in an instant pot? Depending on what grains, multi-grains, beans you're using, it's a different ratio. It's trapped inside so you are cooking on a ratio, this one is six to one. While the beans are on, are you ready for some thin ice? We're going to tread all over it and we're going to cook rice. Oh, why do I have to be here for this bit? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of the most commented things is to use an instant pot to cook rice. Don't want to make anything up. We're going to go exactly as per the official recipe book that comes with the instant pot for their perfect basmati rice. Sounds pretty, bold. you know, bold. Foolproof. Two cups of rice soak in cold water for 15 minutes, at which point we drain and then add to the pot with three cups of cold water. So rice going in. If it's properly drained. Do it usually, do it up, down, up, down. No, no, just, no, no. What are you talking about? What's this? Yeah, see how much oh, water's yeah. coming out of it? Yeah, oh yeah. my oh. God. <laughs> Seriously. <Harry. laughs> Put it into the pot. All of the rice. Oh, it's getting really pissy, isn't it? <laughs> Seriously, every grain. <laughs> yeah. on a spatula. Yeah. Well, that's step one. <laughs> Three cups of water. Oop. Lid on. Here we go, Bess. Pressure cook for four minutes, then keep warm for ten. 
then release. So how does the Instant Pot differ from a rice cooker? This does it quicker because of the pressure cooker. Okay. Right, that's been keeping warm 10 minutes. Release the pressure, rice is ready. <laughs> now as a little experiment, when you close the lid and set it to go, I set a stopwatch. Because although it says it's pressure cooked for four minutes, that actually took 22 and a half minutes to come up to pressure, cook for four minutes, and then keep warm for 10. I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking for, but it's a little stickier than, I, than I'd expect. I'd say it's overcooked. So typically for basmati rice, I would prefer individual grains, each one long, fluffy, identical. Here, some are soft and squidgy and mushy, some are longer but still very sticky. I'm not sure about this. You shouldn't be able to do that with basmati rice. Well, you shouldn't play with your food either. I think you've lost all the beautiful fragrance of basmati rice. Yeah, that is not good basmati rice. Um, but that is their perfect basmati rice. In the official Instant Pot cookbook. For me, and I know I'd say this, but I prefer our method of how to cook rice with the absorption because you can do that with a single portion of rice or 10 portions of rice. This, two cups really is the minimum. You could do a lot more, but it's very difficult to cook smaller portions of rice in that. Evers, you're in. What are we doing now? I know what you're thinking. This video has only got one classic pudding in it. Let's do another one you haven't seen for a decade or two. Creme caramel. The point of this is I wanted to test because a lot of the uh, Instant Pot blogs and stuff had desserts and flan or creme caramel was a very popular one. And I thought that can't possibly work in an Instant Pot because you're supposed to have very gentle bain-marie cooking. Well, let's see. Heat up cream, milk, sugar and vanilla in a pan. Once that's warm, I'm gonna pour it over three beaten eggs as I whisk. The caramel part of creme caramel, I've made a caramel and I've put it in the bottom of four ramekins. Pour it in, remove the air bubbles from it. Best way to remove the air bubbles? Gone. Gone. That's the rack that comes with the pot. So you keep things off the ground. It can either go in that way and then you can always lift things out nice and easy. Little bit of water in the bottom, ramekins go in. The reason Evers loves his experiment so much is because in the past, he wouldn't be allowed to make a flan. Lid goes on, high pressure, nine minutes, and then natural release, and then you can take them out and leave them to chill. So you can literally just walk away and leave that. The Instant Pot has control over your custard. You don't need to worry. Okay, so this has been pressure cooked, natural release and chilled. And why I love this dessert is it's a make ahead dessert that's really quite impressive. But like a molten lava cake, there's only one way to find out if it's worked. Oh, fantastic. Come here. <gasps> oh. I'm not, what do you want? Oh! Whoa. I'm pretty chuffed with that. The process was really easy. I guess the proof is in the pudding or the eating of. Now, Apparently there's a creme caramel challenge floating around the YouTubes. And Jay, do you remember this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but this is far more of an adult jelly than that ever was. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> That's tasty, Ben, well done. Jay, you wouldn't notice, but as you cut into it, it, it like it's soft, it's wobbly, it's Looks perfect in my eyes. Strong P word, but I'd agree. That is a very good <laughs> creme caramel. What P word are you going for? Just out of interest. Wow. My beans have had 45 minutes cooking under pressure. They then had 30 minutes just relaxing. Shall we? Please. That wasn't yeah. as exciting as I was hoping it was going to be. Well, it's already had sort of a natural release of heart. Well, 32 minutes. Smells amazing. What's next? Scoop out the bits you don't want to eat, the lemon, the garlic. We can squeeze the flesh in, but you don't want the whole peel. And the thyme, seasoned, ladle and serve. We're going to serve it with some salsa verde. Just give it a little bit of a zhuzh, because basically you're going to stir it in as you eat it. I have no oh, reference points to know whether the Jane, instant points... Jane. 
This is that puddle dish, the pond dish that he was talking about. Is this about. a Sussex pond? It's a Sussex pond. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. 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 I mean, I know most of the day has been me shoehorning in classic old things that I would never otherwise get to cook on the channel, but I love this. It's a very heartwarming dish, isn't it? Really warming. The reason I picked it is because in the Instant Pot, simple pressure cook with natural release means you can cook dried beans or dried chickpeas without overnight soaking. And therefore, it shaves quite literally 12 hours at least off of this recipe. Whilst two out of the three of us have absolutely no idea what it is that we're eating, I think we can confidently say that the pot has cooked unsoaked beans very quickly, very well. Five recipes in. Now, given that an Instant Pot will set you back just shy of £100, about 96 at the moment, on variable pricing online, what do you think? Now, that's the first time I'm hearing the price. But I'm not surprised. It feels like that should be about £100. It doesn't appear to be a great rice cooker, but it does have three or four other functions that we've not tested today that would be good to look into as well. Does it have a place in the Spafford kitchen? If I hadn't bought a new slow cooker last year, yes. But I can't see the reason for having both. So for me, I think £100 is okay because I'm paying for the most important thing in my house, which is safety. It's a very good pressure cooker. If I've got that, I would never need to get a slow cooker as well. Having now lived with this machine, testing a whole bunch of stuff, it's kind of changed my viewpoint in it because I think it is the safest and best pressure cooker I've ever used. And because it was there, I also used it for a bunch of other stuff that I probably wouldn't typically, but it was there, so I did. I wouldn't go out of my way to get one for six of the seven functions but I would for the pressure cooker and then you get those thrown in and because they're there, I would use them. As always, now it's over to you guys. Have you used an Instant Pot before? Would you like to? Tell us your thoughts, yay or nay. Also, what gadget should we be reviewing next time? Let us know, tweet us at Sorted Food with the hashtag Sorted Gadgets. We love a challenge. Couldn't help yourself, could you? No, I couldn't help myself. It's really good fun.